Hey guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to our Aerofoam MIG project. This has been in the queue for a little bit now and uh, it's time to get it completed. So we have a bunch of cool things happening to this aircraft. It's all going to happen in one video. What we're going to do quickly is we'll go over the products we're putting in the aircraft and then we will talk about what we're going to be doing to this aircraft. So this is the Aerofoam MIG project. It's a foam aircraft. You put a turbine in it. It's already set up for a turbine, which is great. We did the unboxing. I'll put a link down below. So if you haven't seen that unboxing yet, you can check that out. But great little aircraft, well equipped, comes with all the servos and a pretty neat little layout. I could definitely see myself owning one of these things. It's a cool aircraft. So that's the aircraft. With the aircraft, we are gonna be weathering the aircraft, which is gonna be one of the big things that we do. So lots of fun stuff with that. And uh, it's gonna look pretty unique once we're done with it. So that's the aircraft portion. Uh, the engine or power plant for this aircraft will be a Zykoi X45 engine. Um, the owner flies with Spectrum. So we will be putting a Spectrum SPMAR 10360T Ten channel receiver in there. We also have a Unilite lighting setup. The Unilite afterburners, yes, they're a little bit of coin. They cost a fair bit of money for the afterburners, but they are hands down the brightest afterburners out there. So we've got the uh, the Unilite afterburner kit, which is awesome. So we got lots of fun things planned. So let's dive in and begin this project. All right, so this is going to be a very condensed build series on this plane. So step number one is we're going to set up a new model in the Spectrum IX-20 and we're going to get the receiver bound to the new model and the radio. All right, one thing I totally forgot to talk about when we did the overview of the equipment going in this aircraft was the cockpit that was done by Joe. So Joe is my buddy that does all my 3D printing of all the parts we sell on the website. And uh, he did this beautiful cockpit up for this aircraft from RC Custom 3D Printing. Stellar. So if you've been watching the channel for a while, we did a very similar MIG, a Hobby King MIG that was all fiberglass last year and it had a terrible demising flight. And uh, anyways, this is basically the same kind of cockpit that was put in there. So Joe did a great job on this cockpit. So if you happen to be build, building one of these aircraft and you want a, uh, an amazing cockpit for your uh, foamy MIG, All right, so we've undone the pipe, undid the pipe and slid the pipe backwards. And the reason for that is we got our afterburner set up installed. Now, um, it would be nice to get this over top of the pipe, but uh, it's not gonna fit. So um, if we start to try and slide, it's already hard enough to get it over top of the, uh, the heat sinks here. So anyways, that's gonna work. So we're gonna put a couple uh, dollops of silicone on the uh, the heat shrinks just to hold that in place and that is good 
Now the other reason I want to uh, take the pipe out is we have to make our engine mounts and the engine mounts have to go on the underside of the full engine mounts. Reason for that is our Zykoi engine needs to drop down a little bit in the aircraft. And I also want to take out the heat shield here and just uh, take a look underneath. We need to run our afterburner uh, power connection. We're going to run that forward underneath the heat shield. So this is also silicone wire, so it's very high temperature wire, but uh, we're going to take that heat shield off, get the wire run and uh, work on the engine mounting. Now the instructions so far have been pretty clear on all this. I mean, gluing the things on is all pretty straightforward. Um, so we're up to this point here and then we're getting into where we have to set up our gear doors. Now, I'm just taking care of the back end stuff first, just so the engine mounting and everything is done. Uh, but you kind of run into uh, setting up all the linkages and everything, uh, and that's pretty much it. So very basic manual, but at least we've got control throws and some basic layouts on where everything's going. All right, and that's what it looks like underneath the heat shield. So we've run our wire up top there. Uh, we sanded down the existing engine rails about uh, maybe five millimeters on each side, and that allows clearance for the engine to go in there and not be impeded by the engine rails. And then we made some spacers, and these spacers are gonna go on the underside of the engine rails. So they're gonna go like this, and we're gonna make our pencil mark just disappear. We're gonna run those all the way to the back and we will uh, glue those in place and probably put a couple screws going through it as well too. And uh, that'll be a great spot for our engine up and down wise in relationship to the pipe. All right, so we've got our rails in place. They're not screwed down yet, but uh, you can see there the uh, fit of the engine is perfect. So I sanded out just enough of the existing engine rails so the engine just fits in there and uh, we're, we're great. So that's gonna drop the engine down enough to be in line with the pipe or really close, and uh, that's perfect. So what we're gonna do now is we will uh, screw those new engine uh, plates down, and uh, then we can get our heat shield installed again. Okay, so we've played with some various uh, shims there, and what we ended up using was 1 8 inch ply, and I think we're in the right wheelhouse now. So now if we take a look down that pipe, it is really close to being perfect. So that's awesome, that's what we're looking for. So with that being adjusted well, we're gonna screw everything back in. So we'll take the engine out, we'll slide the pipe back, we'll put some silicone on the afterburner, get the heat shield screwed down, get all this stuff screwed down, and that part will be good. Now we're gonna put our uh, fuel pump in first because it gets buried underneath the front of the engine. So we need to deal with that stuff as well too before we screw this engine down. Okay, so we've got our pump installed, our fuel filters right there. Just in front of the fuel filter, I've got a fitting to drop down the fuel tubing. So the, the stock fuel tubing is this stuff here. It's a little bit bigger than four millimeter. So we've got a fitting going from this to the four millimeter Festo and then to our fuel filter. This line here is gonna go right to our turbine. Uh, I took the front plate off here. One of the reasons to do that is we can see See, there's two rudder channels so now I know that this is the nose channel and we also have access to our tank so I'm going to uh, uh, tie wire all those uh, those fittings as well too so with our channel layout we actually uh, we're struggling for channels here a little bit so one of the things is we've got 10 outputs on this receiver uh, gyro doesn't need to be in one of the outputs so we've got that on channel 11 uh, so that is fine. Now one thing, instead of running the rudder and nose, we're gonna pair those together. Instead of that running that off the AS3X, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna have a separate gyro for the rudder and nose system. Now the Powerbox iGyro 1E, great little addition. You can add this to any surface on a plane. So in this case, we'll set it up as a rudder. You could also set it up as an aileron. You could also set it up as an elevator, but uh, very, very commonly used for a single channel. So the, the nice thing about this is you've got two outputs, output one, output two, and uh, this is going to allow completely independent controls of our rudder and our nose wheels. So that is what we're going to be using for this setup and it's going to work beautifully. All right, so we're gonna do a super simple setup on this aircraft. 
there is really absolutely no reason to use multiple batteries on this aircraft. Now, there is some nose weight pieces that are already installed. Uh, they're kind of built into the, the front foam here. Um, I'm not gonna take those out. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna run our battery. This is just my initial thoughts, so things may change. We're gonna run our battery right here over top of the tank. And what that's gonna allow us to do is to install all of our equipment right on the front tray here, because we need a solid location to mount our receiver and gyros and that kind of stuff. So um, that's where everything's gonna go. And uh, the nice thing with this, uh, the included back here, is that's gonna take care of you know running all of our systems. We're gonna have our turbine pull power directly from the battery. So it's just gonna be a, a, a decent all around uh, simple uh, type of setup. So that is the plan. We'll put a high quality 2S LiPo battery in there. And the nice thing about that is the turbine functions with that, the light system functions with that. The BEC here, we can power with a two to six S LiPo and uh, it's just gonna be a good setup, nice and simple. Okay, so initial power up here, we've got good things happening. So we've got the one battery. This isn't our battery we're using. This is just a test setup battery. Uh, we've got the battery plugged into the BEC. Now, um, it doesn't matter which side you plug the BEC into, everything appears to be getting power. So it looks like it's a double battery setup. So what that means is we can just shorten these, put them together and make it uh, a very simple setup, which is good. Um, we've got... Uh, I plugged the nose wheel and the rudder into the eye gyro and you can hear it working there. And the reason for that is we needed to check direction um, and the direction right now is working good. Also dropped the landing gear as well and this stuff works great. So pretty cool setup on this. It doesn't uh, have a separate servo for the doors. It's actually got a whole system built into the gear. So when the gear comes up, the doors close. A very unique, cool, simple system. So what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna cycle the gear and show you. So the doors open, gear comes up and then the doors will close. So what I wanna do is I wanna get this set up with the doors open and set up our linkages because the doors are opening and closing. So um, we can also, we I guess primarily we need to set up our linkage for when that door is closed. So maybe what we'll do is we'll slip the wing on and see how far this door closes if it's like perfectly parallel like that. Um, and then we'll do our linkages on the gear doors first. All right guys, so like any aircraft, you really wanna make sure you Loctite everything. So I was just going through this and uh, right now the bolts for the gear are out, but the main, uh, I guess, mounting point for the main gear here is a little bit loose. So this whole block is moving. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the landing gear out. We also need to Loctite our pins there because uh, you wouldn't wanna just uh, put this thing together and fly it. These are the things that really need to be dealt with. We do still need to do our bolts or uh, hardware for the, uh, the wheels. And so we'll get those both done as well too. And we'll do the same thing to this leg. Now we do have to readjust the geometry on the doors a little bit here. So without doing anything to the, the servo and linkages and all that, what happens is the doors aren't opening enough to allow the landing gear to pass by. And what happens is that servo arm comes out and it's going too far. So the door actually opens and then closes a little bit. So what we need to do is we need to take those servo arms on the door servo. Right now it's kind of sitting at this angle. We need to put it one notch closer to the top surface of the wing. That means we're gonna have to extend the hardware a little bit so it, everything closes properly. But then what's gonna happen is when those doors open, that servo arm's not gonna travel too far 
which is the uh, what's causing those doors to close just a little bit. So a little bit of uh, fiddling around with that. So I'm gonna do that next and hopefully we can get this uh, the main gear all solved. Also with landing gear, you can't forget to do all of your actual gear fasteners here as well too. Now the way this gear actually works is there's this shaft that comes through and you can see the variations where that shaft is traveling. So that actually turns the, the gear uh, to make it work. Without that mechanism, the it would need to sit a lot differently in here. So it's kind of a unique mechanism. So I've Loctited all these bolts, also added some light lubricant to the trunnion and everything just to make sure everything moves smooth. So a little tip for you. All right, one of the nice things about uh, this setup is it's got a manual button on the gear controller. So uh, like right now I've got the radio off, power hooked up and I can just push the little button and make the gear work. So you can see here now we've got clearance to the doors and things are working very well. Now on the manual, the door doesn't close. So I'm gonna push the button again and she opens up. Awesome. All right, so we have our wiring all completed here now. So what I've done is all of our leads have come to a single lead. And uh, the reason I went a little bit longer with this is I'm gonna set the battery up so the output goes on the back. And uh, that's why I had this a little bit longer. This section is essentially done. Uh, what we need to do now is we've got everything plugged in. We haven't really run anything since we've had it all plugged into all the power. So let's turn this guy on and see what it looks like. I guess I'm curious to see the afterburner lights. Uh, everything else should work the same because we've had power to everything else. And uh, then what we need to do is adjust our surface travels. And uh, the manual shows good surface travels, plus minus 25, so it's, it looks like it's pretty clear stuff. So anyways, we're gonna turn this on and see what it looks like. Okay, so we'll just have the battery that direction. So when you power up the gear, it automatically goes to the down position. So I had it in the up position, the gear cycle down and then back up. Okay, so that's fine. Afterburner light works. Awesome. Of course, the Unilight stuff is just crazy bright, so. Oh, turbine's got power, that's good. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna program our travels according to the manual. We're going to learn the turbine, all simple stuff, and uh, then we will probably test run this thing once, uh, once we've got that stuff set up. Basically, we're going to get all of the, uh, the build and setup done, and then we'll get into the painting portion as well too, the weathering, the nose cone painting, or the nose inlet painting. Um, anyways, so let's get the stuff set up and we will revisit. All right, so we've got everything programmed. Uh, the geometry on all the surfaces are, is actually really good. And what I mean by that is you're not like, um, you're, you're putting the, the linkage in the outboard position on the servo and you're not limiting the servo travel really. But of course, that's just getting the numbers that they're recommending in the manual. It could be too much travel, so. Uh, it takes flights, obviously, to get uh, to get used to that. So next thing we need to do is we need to take this aircraft and run the engine. So one of the keys when we do the center of gravity check on this aircraft is we want the bubble trap, which is right in this location here, to be full. And then we want to have some fuel in the main tank. Basically, a landing amount of fuel is what we want to do. So we're going to fill this fuel system up. Um, we will do our test runs, then we'll drain it to a proper uh, amount of fuel, 
and uh, let's run this thing. Now I know some people are concerned with uh, turbines in a foam aircraft, but this is something that is done. I mean, this is not a, a brand new thing. This has been around for a while. It's becoming a lot more popular. Obviously you've got some, some, uh, some heat shielding tape all over the place. Um, you know, everything's quite well contained. The pipe, the outer layer of the pipe comes almost all the way to the front here. So when this turbine's running, there's a lot of air movement through this whole system. So it's really not a concern at all, um, as long as things are done properly and the turbine can breathe and the pipe's doing its thing and all that. So anyways, we're gonna get this on the ground over there and we're gonna put some fuel in it and we are gonna test run it. All right, so we've primed the system. Uh, there's fuel right to the engine. Let's see how she runs. Now this battery's a little bit low. It's sitting at like 7.7 7. volts, I think, because we've been running it, doing all the programming and all that stuff. So we'll see what happens. Alright guys, very cool little plane. This is a absolutely slick little MiG-17. Very nice. Um, it didn't show you the marker lights on the side here as well too, so we've got our green and reds on there. But uh, that worked out really good. Battery was very, very low, and what I did while I had the engine at max throttle was two things. So I went into the uh, the radio here, the telemetry, and I was looking at the RX voltage through the back, making sure that we didn't see any drops in that, which we didn't. It stayed at 5.8 the whole time. Now that's where we're running it because we've got our little pin switches here set to the, uh, the middle position. That's where they came. So I was assuming that's where they needed to be. Uh, there is, it looks like there's a five volt option and a 7.4 volt option. We'll just keep it in the middle and uh, we should be good there. Everything seems to be working beautifully. And the other thing I did was I went on the screen here for the turbine and just kept an eye on the voltage there. So this would be straight vet battery voltage and this stayed at 7.5 the entire time. So zero change with that, uh, whether I was circling the sticks or not. So very good, very simple little setup. What we need to do now is our CG check and we will go from there. So to do our CG check on the little foamy Aerofoam MIG, we are of course using our RC CG machine. Thanks Michael uh, from RC CG machine for sending me the new foam insert. Uh, this is what comes in the kits now. Thank you for that. It fits absolutely perfect. Okay, so after doing the CG check, a couple important points with this aircraft. So number one, the CG in the manual is 270 millimeters. This is incorrect. Uh, the actual CG is 300 millimeters. So this is right off of the, uh, the Global Jet Club uh, website. And they say that 300 millimeters back from the, uh, the joint 
of the wing to the fuselage, which is right there. I mean, this could be correct if you're somehow compensating for that little triangle piece. But so we redid our numbers just to make sure we were in the right wheelhouse and we are at, uh, we want to be at 300 millimeters back. So because we need some nose weight, what I'm gonna do is we are still sticking with the single battery for all of our control and lighting systems, but we're gonna add another battery in here for the turbine specifically. So we'll use a 2000 milliamp two cell LiPo uh, for the turbine. So we just need to rewire this. We'll just snip these guys off, put some heat shrink tubing on them, and then we'll just uh, put our end on the, uh, the turbine battery and then we'll have this guy just Velcroed in place. Now we do still need to add two satellite receivers to this setup. Uh, they're on order, they're arriving. I just need to wait and do them, but that's not gonna hold us up for obviously the finishing up this aircraft. So we're just gonna put some Velcro on these guys, get it in place, and then we will uh, be pretty much done with the build portion of the MIG. Okay, so we've got our other battery added into the nose and just so you can see here our weight without fuel Well with a little bit of fuel about a fifth of a tank is about 10.4 pounds So that's a landing amount of fuel. So with uh, the rest of the tank full We should be just over 11 ish pounds is where this aircraft is coming in at all right, it is weathering and painting time on this beautiful MIG. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are gonna get the chrome intake section completed. So what we need to do is basically prep off the back part of the fuselage. Now the reason we're doing this first is because if we get any paint lift, that would be the time to deal with it. If we do all the weathering on the rest of the aircraft, tape it off, lift it off, and we get some, uh, some paint lift, that would be a disaster. So nose cone first, and then we'll do weathering on the rest. All right, so we got our chrome painted, and that looks really good. Uh, that looks nice. So it's a cool effect, it's, uh, yeah, I like it. It's gonna look awesome. So we have to let that dry, it's gonna take a while, and then we will continue with the weathering of the aircraft. Now for the weathering, we are going to be using an airbrush with black paint and uh, that's basically it. So it's all just by hand uh, going over each of the surfaces. Uh, there are some panel lines in here. So we've got some scale details and stuff like that. So we'll kind of work off those bits um, as much as we can. And uh, it's gonna make this plane look pretty slick. Okay, it's airbrush weathering time. So I'll show you a couple uh, things that I use here for this type of scenario. Obviously any of the weathering that we add is going to be with the direction of the airflow. Now because this is not a fiberglass fuselage, we are just doing airbrush weathering. So a couple of the very simple tools is just kind of thicker pieces of paper. So you hold the thicker paper over top of panel lines like this and then you're spraying with the airflow towards the back of the aircraft. When you pull that off, it's going to make a nice solid uh, termination point on the panel and your weathering or smoke or whatever dirtiness is going to be moving towards the back. Now, you have to be careful on a foam aircraft because you can't really use any uh, tape on this aircraft because it'll just peel up the silver finish. So uh, that's why we're just using airbrush and paper. So as we go through this, I'll show you guys some of the uh, little details and stuff here and there, but uh, we're basically just gonna start kind of in the midsection of the plane, work our way backwards, and essentially we'll be doing the top of the aircraft first, and then we'll flip it over and do the underside. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys the weathering. Now please keep in mind that weathering is very subjective. You if, you, if you're weathering your plane, you may want lots, you may want less, that's okay. Whatever you decide is, is good for you is good for you, and that is great. Um, I wanted a lot of weathering on this aircraft because the foam aircraft lacks a lot of panel lines. Um, I feel that adding additional weathering or deep weathering creates a lot of depth on the aircraft and I think it looks phenomenal. So let's take a look at it and I'll explain a little bit to you guys. All right, and there is the one side that is weathered 
obviously very heavy. Um, what I did here is you can kind of see uh, everything's done in the direction of the airflow from the leading edge back. Uh, we've got some hard panel lines here. This is where I would hold up the, uh, the paper or cardboard or whatever and spray on the other side of it. Um, we've got some of our horizontal lines. What I'll generally do there is get in really tight with the airbrush and just create some depth. And I think it looks phenomenal. I especially love when you get into some of the reds and stuff with the airbrushing, it uh, makes it look really good. So there is the weathered side. You can see lots of depth, lots of dimension, lots of cool stuff to look at. And we have the non-weathered side, basic plain. Yeah, I don't like it. But I do think that looks wicked. All right, and we got the underside all done. Uh, I think it looks awesome. Uh, man, that's cool looking. There's a shot from the back. Uh, a couple other little things here. We painted the, uh, the afterburner cone black just because it was silver before, but that is what she looks like 
on the underside. So products we use here. So basically we're for, well, for everything, we're just using uh, black primer and this uh, sprays really nice, works really nice. And then thinning it down with uh, airbrush thinner. So that's basically it, pretty simple. Just takes time and some creativity. All right guys, and that is everything for the Aerofoam MiG-17 project. A uh, quick little project. Uh, it took about, uh, I have to look at my paper, I think it was like 31 or 36 hours, one of the two. Um, altogether, cool project. The plane goes together quite quick, but there's really quite a few things to make sure you check over. Like we covered in the video, uh, you wanna make sure you go over all your landing gear and all that type of stuff, just to make sure that uh, nothing comes loose on you. And uh, give, it a, give it a good check over is my suggestion. So very cool looking little project. It's gonna fly absolutely awesome. These little foam, uh, foam aircraft with these uh, tiny little engines are definitely uh, pretty cool, slick little unit. So thanks guys for checking out the project. Thanks for watching the video. If you have any questions, list them down below. If you fly one of these foam aircraft, comment down below with what you're flying. Uh, I'm interested to see all the different variations of what people are flying. So thanks guys for watching and we'll see you in the next video.